What's going on guys? Zeus here. And today, okay look, I know the next video I was supposed to post was about to be, what well, was supposed to be about like rape culture and victim blaming and all that. But I figured, you know, I'll just post it up tomorrow. Because today is the two year anniversary that the video I'm responding to was uploaded and I was like, may as well do it. I mean, just because. Also, um, one of my subscribers decided it'd be a good idea to make a video response to it. And since eventually, and I do mean eventually, I'm going to make a video about fat shaming. I may as well have at least one video on fat shaming. With that being said, let's do this. I want to take a moment to address a situation that has become a talking point in this community over the past week, and especially on Facebook, that centers around me. On Friday, I received the following email from a lacrosse man with the subject line, Community Responsibility, and it reads as follows. Hi, Jennifer. It's unusual that I see your morning show, but I did so for a very short time today. I was surprised indeed to witness that your physical condition hasn't improved for many years. Surely you don't consider yourself a suitable example for this community's young people, girls in particular. Obesity is one of the worst choices a person can make and one of the most dangerous habits to maintain. I leave you this note hoping that you'll reconsider your responsibility as a local public personality to present and promote a healthy lifestyle. Damn. Pretty sure that hurt her feelings just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm just kidding. That probably hurt her feelings a lot. Now, those of us in the media, we get a healthy dose of critiques from our viewers throughout the year, and we realize that it comes with having a job in the public eye. But this email was more than that. No, it wasn't. It was just some guy saying that maybe you should think about losing weight so you'd be a better role model for kids who watch you. Although, I'm not really sure how many kids are watching the news program. I know the only reason I watched the news program was for like this current event assignment I had to do for like world history, but I mean, it's not like I really enjoyed it all too much. I'm just saying. Well, I tried my best to laugh off the very hurtful attack on my appearance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you spent a great deal of time attempting to laugh off that very, very mean and spiteful letter that didn't turn out to be so mean and spiteful anyway. Yep, I am thoroughly convinced that's exactly what you tried to do when you read that letter. You just tried to laugh it off. My colleagues could not do the same, especially my husband, our 6 and 10 anchor, Mike Thompson. Mike posted this email on his WKBT Facebook page and- I'm not going to lie, I kind of like stopped and thought about the letter for a second. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, it kind of sounds like a social justice warrior wrote that letter to another social justice warrior. Hmm, it's weird. I mean, what happens when an immovable object meets an unstoppable force, right? I guess this is the result. What happened next has been truly inspiring. Hundreds and hundreds of people have taken the time out of their day to not only lift my spirits, but take a stand that attacks like this are not okay. Well, the funny thing about that letter is it's not like he just blatantly flat out said that you were a fat dumbass. He just said that you're a little overweight. And objectively speaking, that's true. You can't really argue against that. Unless, of course, you want to try to change the BMI scale, but I mean, a lot of people don't even... Um, okay, let me rephrase that. A lot of overweight people don't... Okay, let me rephrase that again. A lot of overweight and athletic people do not pay too much attention to the BMI scale. And honestly, as a regular person, I don't either because I just really don't give all that much of a fuck. But I do think there is a little bit of information, or at least it should be taken to some kind of consideration when you think about, you know, you being overweight, because, you know, being overweight, objectively speaking, is a fucking health problem. I mean, it's not really much to argue there. I mean, I'm just saying. Now, we're going to have more on that in just a second. But first, the truth is, I am overweight. You could call me fat. And you know, look, if you know you're overweight, then why are you shocked or surprised when someone calls you out for being overweight? You know, that would be like someone saying, hey, sir, you're pretty tall. And me would just be like, I can't believe you said I was tall. There's nothing I can do about being a tall person. I mean, okay, look, listen, if you don't like being overweight, there is something you can do about that. Um, 
some in require surgery like liposuction, liposuction, and others require dieting and exercise, you know, it's, I mean, just because, and, and honestly, you know, just because you're fat doesn't mean you're a bad person, it, it doesn't even necessarily mean you're a lazy person, you know, some people have problems, or some ladies, you know, they get pregnant and don't have time to exercise, or they don't try to squeeze in that time to exercise, so I mean, you, you know, being fat you know, isn't the worst thing in the world, being obese, on the other hand, you know, when it becomes a health issue, certainly is. So, I mean, if you know you're fat, I mean, you got two options. Either change it or accept it. And if you know you're fat, then... I mean... I'm just saying. Yes, even obese. Okay, so if you're obese, that means you most definitely do need to lose some fucking weight. On a doctor's chart. But to the person who wrote me that letter, do you think I don't know that? That your cruel words are pointing out something that I don't see? No, there's a word that I can use to accurately describe the way this woman read that letter. And that word is hypersensitive. I mean, cruel words? He only said, he didn't even actually say you're fat. He just said, okay, well, I guess fat's a synonymous with obese, but that's an objective fact. He's, he's not saying that you're a horrible person. He's just saying you're not that good of a role model. And, I mean, Miley Cyrus isn't that good of a fucking role model either. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, if you, either you, you got two options. You can either accept it or you can change it. <laughs> you don't know me. You are not a friend of mine. You are not a part of my family, and you have admitted that you don't watch this show. You know, considering the fact that he said for the past couple of years your physical condition hasn't changed, he had to have been watching the show at least at some point in time to be able to make that observation. So you know nothing about me but what you see on the outside. And I am much more than a number on a scale. And here is where I want all of us to learn something from this. And that lesson is, do not ever, ever call a woman out for some stupid shit that she does. You will regret it. And I've done it several times in the course of my life. Just saying. If you didn't already know, October is National Anti-Bullying Month, and- Is it really? Huh, I wish all the people who fucked with me in high school figured that out. I wish they knew that October was Anti-Bullying Month. I wish they would just go, oh wait, it's October? <laughs> fuck, uh, I'm sorry, Zers, I'm not gonna fuck with you anymore. You have a good day. I'll, I'll start picking on you back in November. You, you, you have a good time, yeah. So, I mean, if you're dealing with someone that doesn't care about hurting your feelings, you, you know, dedicating an entire fucking month to not hurting people's feelings is not going to make someone who doesn't care, care at some point in time, you know, just saying. This is a problem that is growing every day in our schools and on the internet. It is a major issue in the lives of young people today, and as the mother of three young girls, it scares me to death. Now, I am a grown woman, and luckily for me, I have a very thick skin. Mm-hmm. So thick that you decided to dedicate four minutes of your life talking about a cruel letter that wasn't actually very cruel at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've thoroughly convinced me that you have a very thick skin. You got some thick hide, man. You got armadillo thick hide. That, that's how thick your skin is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got thick skin. Mm -hmm. Literally, as that email pointed out, and otherwise. And that man's words mean nothing to me. Mm hmm Yep. You have done a fantastic job of showing me just how much his words don't mean anything to you. I just want you to know that. I am thoroughly convinced that that letter didn't mean anything to you. I am. I just want you to know that. You've convinced me. Two years later, I am convinced that there's no way that letter had any effect on you whatsoever. Mm hmm I, I'm just, I'm, that's not sarcastic at all. Like, I'm not being sarcastic, I'm being honest. Like, I am so convinced that that letter did not hurt your feelings. But what really angers me about this is there are children who don't know better who get emails as critical as the one I received, or in many cases, even worse. If only, if only lots of children nowadays were getting letters from anonymous people, correcting their behavior and telling them that they should do better, I think the world would be in a much better place and not as bad as you might think it is. Each and every day. The internet has become a weapon. Our schools have become a battleground. And this behavior 
is learned. It is passed down from people like the man who wrote me that email. Ironically, the man who wrote that letter didn't even write it all mean-spirited like. He just wrote it as if like a, like a legitimate concern. Like he was thinking that maybe you should lose some weight because you're a public figure. And he wants more healthy people in the spotlight. I mean, if you agree or disagree with him, that's one thing. But he wasn't cruel or angry about it. He was just being honest. You're overweight. If you are at home and you are talking about the fat news lady, guess what? Your children are probably going to go to school and call someone fat. You damn skippy they are. You know, I think in an earlier video response, I said, you know, there are some statements that are just so obvious that you may as well not even actually fucking say them because they're so obviously true, there's really nothing telling in that statement. Um, for example, if I didn't have that video camera, I wouldn't be able to record videos. I mean, yeah, it's true, but it's so damn obvious that, well, it kind of goes without saying. We need to teach our kids how to be kind, not critical, and- No, I say we need to teach our kids how to be kindly critical. Now, I am a very abrasive critic, or I wouldn't even say critic, I'm just a very abrasive individual overall. And so, the way I criticize people can kind of sometimes be really, really nice, or it can be really, really abrasive, depending on the nature of who I'm- trying to correct and who I'm trying to help or give advice to. Because, you know, you got to handle different people differently. Um, I say we definitely need to teach kids how to criticize other people's behaviors because, one, you can either help someone learn from their stupid mistakes, or two, you can be a wiser man and learn from their mistakes. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you learn how to criticize it and evaluate what happened. I mean, again, there's a wrong and a right way to criticize people. It kind of depends on who you're criticizing, and also it depends on, you know, if you're going to be nice or if you're going to be mean about it. I mean, yeah, kindly criticizing people isn't a pretty good thing. Just saying. And we need to do that by example. So many of you have come to my defense over the past four days. I am literally overwhelmed by your words. To my colleagues and my friends from today and from years ago, my family, my amazing husband, and so many of you out there that I will probably never have the opportunity to meet. I will never be able to thank you enough for your words of support. Well, the unfortunate part about all of that support is that they didn't support this woman in changing. They supported this woman in staying the exact same way she's always been. They should have tried to make her feel a little uncomfortable and try to make her want to lose weight instead of rallying to her defense because she was a victim. Because she wasn't a fucking victim. I mean, he, he didn't attack her. He just told her the truth that she's overweight. And you know, and look, listen, that might hurt your feelings, but I mean, it, they didn't do it. He didn't do it to, to, to be malicious. He did it because he genuinely thought that that was something you needed to hear to get you up and moving. And if he's wrong, then he's fucking wrong. But he didn't attack you. He didn't do it because he's an evil, malicious bully. I mean, I don't know. I guess the road to hell is often paid in good intentions. And for taking a stand against this bully, we are better than that email. We are better than the bullies that would try to take us down. And I leave you with this. To all of the children out there who feel lost, who are struggling with your weight, with the color of your skin, your sexual preference, your disability, even the acne on your face, listen to me right now. Do not let your self-worth be defined by bullies. And that's probably the only thing I can agree with this woman on in this video because she failed in kind of living her own freaking advice because literally two years later she made a video on a channel called Clever Talk or something like that where she's still talking about her dealing with her fucking weight which means that that letter clearly bothered her clearly messed with her and it still has some effect on her to this very fucking day which is a, again a horrible example to abide by so, so kids, teenagers, do not follow this lady's example if something hurts you, or if, a, if a fucking letter like that hurts your feelings, you need to take time to stop and heal and make a decision to either, one, accept yourself, or two, change. Learn from my experience that the cruel words of one are nothing compared to the shouts of many. Except that's not true, because you personally based your entire career around that letter. But, yeah, whatever. That's the end of her video, and subsequently the end of mine. Of course, more videos on fat shaming will be coming out eventually. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, man, go ahead and click the like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment, comment box below, and as always, have a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon.
Adiós.